Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the end crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education. And here we explain the topics of cryptocurrency, world using analogies, stories and examples so that anyone can easily understand them. In this video, we're going to explain what is Web3. If you're watching this video, you are a user. Think about how much the web has changed society, how much it affects your day to day life. Given the dramatic impact the internet had in our world, it only makes sense that we should be curious about where the web is going next. To understand this, we need to understand the evolution of the web and what is it used to be like and how it got where it is today. The evolution of Web3 is often separated into three stages, Web1, Web2 and Web3. Web1 is categorized by web participants as consumers of content and the creators were typically developers who build websites that were mostly static pages served app as text or images. The internet was set up this way from about 1991 to 2000. Sites did not have much interactivity. It was as if the web was basically read only. Web 2 refers to the current iteration of the modern web. Most of us are experiencing today and is categorized by web participants. As creators of content, it is interactive and social and you don't have to be a developer to make content for the web. As companies like Google, Facebook and Twitter began to develop Web 2 software to facilitate interactions between the web users. They saw an opportunity to monetize their user pages through advertisements in the sale of personal data. Data collection and targeted advertising have become a core part of the web to experience and how it is engineered to function. However, frustration towards some of these big tech companies has been mounting in the general public as information has come out about exploitation of the user data they have been collecting. Enter Web3. You could think of Web3 in terms of participants as owners because the most fundamental difference between Web2 and Web3 is the decentralization. In Web2, developers build applications that run on a single server where the data is owned and the app is operated by one central authority. In Web3, applications run on decentralized networks of many peer-to-peer -peer server and leverage a distributed ledger technology technology known as a blockchain. Participants are able to host one of these peer-to-peer -peer servers or nodes or create, govern, improve and otherwise contribute to the network and be rewarded with cryptocurrency tokens, making them owners with a vested interest in the web who stand to directly benefit from its success in Web 2. A developer might pay a cloud service provider like Amazon Web Services to host and provide access to their application on the web, but with Web 3 instead of going to Amazon, that money goes directly to the network participants and the Web2 companies might pay YouTube or Facebook to show their advertisements in a feed of targeted users. Once again, with Web3, this payment goes directly back to the participants. In other words, imagine earning revenue from the ads you watch online. Web3 also introduces the opportunity for native payments through cryptocurrency tokens. It's easy to integrate software, while it's like MetaMask into decent centralized applications or debts, enabling anonymous and secret instant payments. Even internationally without the user having to hand over sensitive personal data, there are also projects in the works. To apply the same principle to the identity on the world, trying the user's identity to a wallet address in a way that is seamlessly transferable across apps rather than requiring an email and password with oath. Additionally, tokenization allows for anyone to participate in building or investing the software they use from the beginning. Many Web2 software companies sell off percentage of their software company in exchange for venture capital in order to become successful, which binds them to the desires of their wealthy shareholders as they grow. A Web3 project might instead announce a token release, but the percentage set aside for the early builders, a percentage for sale for the public. People who believe even the project can buy in and even use their tokens to vote on changes to the project because all data recorded in the blockchain is immutable and transparent. Everyone will be able to see exactly what happens with the fans. So when is all about the Web3 stuff going to happen? Well, it's already happening right now. The internet is going through another paradigm shift from right at this very moment. And I think it's important to keep an eye on what's going with Web3 
three projects. If we want to stay on top of where the Web3 is going, the internet is going through another paradigm shift right at this very moment. And I think it's important to keep an eye on what's going on with Web3 projects. If we want to stay on the top of where the web is going in the future, if you want to learn more about it, you can subscribe to this channel where I'll be making more videos. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.